Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I hope this video finds you safe and well. This video will take you to an experiment which is ideally done in the laboratory, but because of the present restrictions in social assemblies, it would be better to learn from your own homes. It is our sincere hope that this video will simulate the experiment and stimulate you to learn about the amphoteric properties of amino acids. This video is brought to you by Team Titration, composed of our former chair, Dr. Jose Blas, Dr. Noel Martin Bautista, and yours truly, Dr. Imelda Dapis. In this laboratory activity, we will be demonstrating the amphoteric property of amino acids, that is, their acid-base behavior. Amino acids have ionizable groups, namely, the alpha-carboxyl group, the alpha-amino group, and in some amino acids, an ionizable R group. These groups behave as either acid or base by donating or accepting protons, respectively depending on a given pH level. The addition of formaldehyde is based on the concept of Soren Peter Sorensen, a Danish biochemist who observed that the endpoint of titrating a solution of an amino acid with standard alkali is not reached without the addition of neutralized formaldehyde. The objectives of this experiment are the following. First, to determine the amphoteric property or acid-base behavior of amino acids. May they be neutral, acidic, or basic. And, secondly, to determine the effect of neutralized formaldehyde on the acid-base behavior of the different amino acids. To start Please take note of the materials and reagents that we will be using in the activity. These are the amino acid solutions that we will use, 0.1 molar glycine to represent the neutral amino acids, and 0.1 molar lysine to represent the basic amino acids. 0.1 molar aspartic acid to represent the acidic amino acids. We are using the following titrants. 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid and 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. And these are the necessary laboratory equipment, burettes, flasks, pipettes, rubber bulbs. We expect that you have used a pH meter before or have at least seen one. This instrument will help us monitor and measure the pH of the solution after each addition of a certain volume of acid or base. Watch the procedure. For each amino acid, we will be preparing four 10 ml solutions. Each beaker will be used for the following steps. First, for the titration of the amino acid with hydrochloric acid. Second, for the titration of the amino acid with sodium hydroxide. Third, for the titration of the formaldehyde treated amino acid against hydrochloric acid. And lastly, for the titration of the formaldehyde treated amino acid with sodium hydroxide. Thus, for each representative amino acid, we will be doing four titrations. And with three representative amino acids, 
we will be conducting a total of 12 titration processes in all. By the way, in adding formaldehyde to the formaldehyde-treated amino acids, please take note that 5 ml of neutralized formaldehyde is added for glycine and aspartic acid. And please do remember that for the beaker containing lysine, we will be adding 10 ml of neutralized formaldehyde instead of just 5 ml. We now prepare our titrants. Take two burettes and fill the first with 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid. And the second with 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. We shall now perform the experiment. Let us begin with the neutral amino acid, glycine, and titrating it against 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid. We will measure the initial pH without the addition of acid or base to determine the baseline pH of the amino acid. Once the baseline pH of glycine is taken and recorded, we can start the titration by adding 2 ml of the acid. Let us wait for the pH to stabilize before recording the pH after this titration step. Continue adding the acid in increments of 2 ml. However, Please take special note that after adding a total of 4 ml of the acid, we next add only 1 ml instead of 2 ml, so that on the third titration step, we will be measuring the pH at the point when we have added a total of 5 ml of the acid. Afterwards, Please be careful to add again just 1 ml of the acid to have a total volume of 6 ml of the acid added to the titrate. After this step, continue adding the acid in 2 ml increments again, measuring the pH after stabilization and recording the pH readings. Please take special note. That after reaching a total of 14 ml of the acid, we again add only 1 ml instead of 2 ml to have a total of 15 ml of the acid added. Please be careful to add again just 1 ml of the acid to have a total volume of 16 ml added to the titrate. Afterwards, Continue adding again in increments of 2 ml readings of the acid, measuring and recording the subsequent pH until a total of 20 ml has been added.
we will repeat the process of titrating glycine but against the base, sodium hydroxide, this time. We will go through the same process using instead 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide until 20 ml is reached. This table shows the different pH readings during the titration of glycine against the acid hydrochloric acid without neutralized formaldehyde. Please feel free to pause this presentation anytime in order to copy the values presented here. On the other hand, this table shows the different pH readings during the titration of glycine against the base sodium hydroxide without neutralized formaldehyde. The titration of glycine against hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide is repeated using the same process, but this time, we will be using neutralized formaldehyde-treated glycine. Do remember the amount of neutralized formaldehyde added to the amino acid. It is not the same for the three amino acids. This table shows the different pH readings during the titration of formaldehyde-treated glycine against the acid hydrochloric acid. Feel free to pause this presentation anytime in order to copy the values presented here. On the other hand, this table shows the different pH readings during the titration of formaldehyde-treated glycine against the base, sodium hydroxide. Now, using a sheet of graphing paper, plot the values using pH as the ordinate versus the number of milliequivalents of acid or base as the abscissa. Take note that 1 ml of 0.1 normal of the acid or base is equal to 0.1 milliequivalents of corresponding acid or base. The same procedure is repeated for the titration of aspartic acid. The pH readings of the titration of aspartic acid while being titrated against hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide are likewise recorded and tabulated. Additionally, neutralized formaldehyde-treated aspartic acid is likewise titrated against the acid and against the base with the different resulting pH readings recorded and tabulated. Succeeding slides will show the results of the different titration processes. This table lists the pH readings during the titration of aspartic acid against hydrochloric acid without formaldehyde. Please feel free to pause this presentation anytime in order to copy the values presented here. On the other hand, this table shows the pH readings during the titration of aspartic acid against sodium hydroxide without formaldehyde. These are the pH readings during the titration of formaldehyde-treated aspartic acid against hydrochloric acid. Lastly, this table gives the pH readings during the titration of formaldehyde-treated aspartic acid against sodium hydroxide. Just like before, take a sheet of graphing paper and plot the values with the pH's ordinate versus the number of milliequivalents acid or base as the abscissa. Again, take note that 1 ml of 0.1 normal of the acid or base is equal to 0.1 milliequivalents of corresponding acid or base. Let us now continue by titrating our basic amino acid lysine against the acid and the base. Again, 
the pH readings of the titration of lysine while being titrated against hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide are recorded. And similarly, neutralized formaldehyde treated lysine is subsequently titrated against the acid and against the base with the different resulting pH readings monitored and tabulated. The results of the preceding titration processes are revealed in the next few slides. This table presents the pH readings during the titration of lysine against hydrochloric acid without formaldehyde. This table, on the other hand, shows the pH readings during the titration of lysine against sodium hydroxide without formaldehyde. To continue, this table lists the pH readings during the titration of formaldehyde-treated lysine against hydrochloric acid. And finally, this table provides the pH readings during the titration of formaldehyde-treated lysine against sodium hydroxide. Once again, using a sheet of graphing paper, plot the pH against the corresponding number of milliequivalents of acid or base. Please take note that 1 ml of 0.1 normal of the acid or base is equal to 0.1 milliequivalents of corresponding acid or base. For this laboratory activity, these are the assignments. First, as previously instructed in the procedure, plot the titration curve using one graph per amino acid with all values with and without formaldehyde. The milliequivalents of acid and base as abscissa, or x-axis, against pH as ordinate, the y-axis. Label all pertinent items in the graph. Secondly, submit your report with the titration curves to your facilitator. Answer the guide questions in the manual. Thirdly, prepare for the synchronous post-laboratory conference or discussion with your facilitator. Lastly, discuss the objectives, biochemical significance of the experiment, materials, procedure, results, and interpretation of the results. Discuss the answers to the guide questions during your post-lab session. That is all for the experiment on the titration of amino acids. We thank you very much. We hope you not only learned from this laboratory experiment, but enjoyed it as well. Have a good day. Three amino acids mainly glycine, aspartic acid, and glycine. <laughs> 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 <laughs>